Welcome back everybody to Back to the Basics. Now so far we have covered scallops or arcs. We have covered S-curves. We have covered straight lines. And today we're going to go over my favorite, and that's the loops. There are so many things you can do with loops. It's a great connector, it's great standing on its own, and that's what we're going to work on. So I've gone ahead on my fabric, and I've drawn a series of lines. On this first lesson, or this first design we're going to do, you're going to draw a series of three lines a half an inch apart. And then we'll be ready to start on that design. Okay, what we're going to do in this first step is just practice the loops until you get comfortable with them. And I'm sure this won't take you any time at all. But we're going to do a series of short ones and long ones. So I call these E's and L's. So we're going to start out by making a short one that hits the first line. The L then will go up to the top line. And while you're doing these, try to keep the loops straight up and down versus being slanted. You want to keep them straight up and down this way. Or you can make them nice and fat, or you can make them skinny. Whichever you prefer. Remember, keep your eye on the lines instead of the needle, so you can stop exactly where you need to. So this will get you very comfortable doing L's. A lot of us will tend to want to slant them a little bit, just like we slant our handwriting. But we want to try to keep them straight up and down. And when we're done, that's what we'll end up with. On this exercise, we're going to try to achieve a couple different things. First of all, it's a reminder about keeping your eyes where they need to be. Not on the needle, it's taking care of itself. You need to have them focused on the lines. We're going to start by drawing a series of three lines. You've got your top line, an inch down from there you have a middle line, and an inch down from there you have your bottom line. What we're going to do is do a series of L's, try to keep them nice and uniform and equally spaced apart. And then we're going to come back and do them backwards and upside down. Are you ready? Here we go. So there's our first L. And again, just try to keep them as evenly spaced as you can. We could have done this with a grid. And grids are fine for some things, but I'm trying to get you in the habit of learning how to look at something and figure out the spacing in your head so that you don't have to mark your quilt so much because that's very time consuming. If you can try to equally space your designs as you're stitching them, it requires a little bit of concentration, concentration, but again, it saves a lot of marking time. 
So continue doing your L's across the line. Now I've made my lines about eight inches long in case you're wondering. You can make them any length you want. But that is what you should end up with. It's fairly evenly spaced. That's what we're looking for. And now we're going to do them upside down. And what we're going to try to do is to keep the L's lined up with each other. So here goes. This would be a nice design for a border. Now I'm going to show you whenever I start to, to make my arc is right when I get to the center of the L where the lines cross, that's when I start to swing down. So that when I come up, I'm coming back up at the same point if that makes any sense to you at all. So we're going to swing over to where the lines cross on the L above it and then go down. Come back up to where the lines cross and continue on in that manner. And that helps you to keep your L's fairly aligned. a nice border design. This is probably one of my favorite designs. It's great for sashing. Um, it's great for filling in triangles, squares, anything, because you can adjust the size, the height, very easily with this stitch. But we're going to go ahead, I've got two lines drawn again. I think they're about an inch and three quarters apart. Um, the size really doesn't matter. You can make them two inches would probably be ideal because that's generally the size of sashing, just to give you an idea what it feels like to do this stitch. But this is the wishbone stitch. And we're going to start stitching in the middle between these two lines. We're going to swing up and do an E and try to keep that E straight up and down. And now we're going to swing back down and do another E. Now, you almost have like the, the Laverne L if you look at it from a sideways view. And that's what this reminds me of is a bunch of L's. But we want to keep them spaced the same. Now try to keep the loops the same size. And when I say spaced, let me get a couple on here so you can see what I'm referring to. Do you see how these lines going down? are pretty evenly spaced apart. The same with these lines going up. They're also parallel to each other. That's what makes this design look nice. So let's continue on. When I come down this time, I want to keep my line parallel to this line. Swing around, make my E. Back up. Keep the line parallel to the one before it. Once you get this stitch down, I think it stitches up really fast. That's probably why I like it when I'm in a hurry. But it looks very effective. 
This done on a shiny, satiny type fabric is really pretty. And there you have your wishbones. Let me show you what I meant by, by how easily the wishbone stitch will conform to a triangle. Let's say you have a bunch of flying geese you're working with. So I've drawn a triangle here and I'm going to show you how nicely this wishbone stitch will fill in this triangle and this is really an exaggerated triangle normally you wouldn't have one quite this tall but I just wanted to show you how easily this stitch will conform to whatever size you need it to be. And just like that, you have your triangle completely filled in. I think you'll find this a fun stitch to use and bring it out of your toolbox quite often. This next exercise is also great for a border, and it's a series of loopy hearts. Now we've got Again, three lines drawn. They're each a half of an inch apart, so we have a total of one inch here. Uh, if you are doing a wider border, you would change your sizing to accomplish that. But for our practice, this will work out fine. So we're going to start out, and we're just going to do a loop. And kind of a fat loop. And we're going to come down to the bottom line. We're going to come back up. Do another fat loop. And swing over, do a loop. Go back to the bottom line again to form your heart. Back up and do a loop. Swing over, do another loop. Back down to do your heart. Up to do a loop, swing over, do a loop, and back down to do your heart. Now you can do these closer together so it resembles a heart even more. And let me show you how we're going to do that. I'm going to come over here and we're going to do a, a wide loop down, back up, a wide loop a wide loop, down, a wide loop, so that the loops almost touch. And there you have your heart border. Now when I said that I like loops, it's probably because it's one of the first stitches I learned how to do. Um, I like the freedom of it. So instead of drawing lines, we're just going to do a free-for-all for now. And it's just going to be a series of loops. And you really want to change the direction of the loop so they're not all going to the top. And if you're doing this as a fill, you want to make sure you're not leaving blank spaces. So make sure to go back and get those. So that's, that's the first type of loop that most people learn how to do. Just changing the 
orientation of the loops. Now another thing you can do with loops is this. You can keep going on like that, but every once in a while, let's throw in one of those leaves that you learned how to do. Remember that? You can tie those leaves in. Or if you're quilting for a little girl, you could do some flowers just by doing a bunch of loops. And usually petals have, or flower petals have five petals. We can make a little circle in the middle and go on to do some more loops. Let's do that flower again. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, and a flower in the middle, and come back out and continue on with your loops. You could also do hearts. So you can see that with loops, the sky's the limit. You can do just about anything with those. And now you know why I like them so much. Here's another great stitch and it makes a really quick all over design for a quilt. If you're trying to get something quilted quickly and easily, this works well. So we're going to start out, let's bring up the thread. We're going to start out by doing a giant loop. So basically, it's almost like a big circle. And I'm going to do another circle inside of there, and then a loop. Another giant loop. The loop inside. Another loop. And you just keep going from there. Now I've just worked myself into a corner. So what do you do whenever you're working yourself into a corner like that? Well, you do just as I did, and you rip out those stitches and get yourself back to where you need to be. Again, this, this is a fun, quick stitch, but you always have to keep in mind where you're going next. So I'm going to very carefully lower my needle in the correct spot to bring up my bobbin thread. And if I were doing this for real, I would be tying off these ends so they wouldn't be noticeable. But since this is just a, a play, pretend exercise, I'm just going to end up cutting them off. So now I need to make a loop so I can come out here somewhere. So I'm going to carefully aim my loop that way. So again, you always have to think, okay, where am I going next? I want to go up here, so I want to aim my loop. So it goes up there. And that is another way to, to stitch your quilt with loops 
And if these loops had been made larger, you would be finished with this quilt top in no time at all. This is another quick loop. Uh, fills up your quilt really quickly. It's a nice all over design and it's a ribbon meander. So basically remember we did how, how uh, these designs are all going to start borrowing on what we've done before. If you notice on this design that we just did here, we have the S-curve that we learned before. We have the circular motions that we learned before. Everything's starting to tie together. So on the ribbon loop meander, it's just going to be a series of S-curves with big loops. And again, you want to keep your loops alternating top and bottom. Okay, when I get up here, I'm going to make a ribbon end, which is just a V. Again, we're using straight lines. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over this ribbon but I'm going to cross over at different times. Now if you need to mark your design so you know where to cross over, you can do that. I generally just go by the seat of my pants when I'm doing it, whatever you're comfortable with. But basically I'm going to come down here, I'm going to cross over that line, come up here, Cross over that line, cross over that line. Do you see how now it looks like a ribbon? So basically what we're doing is echo quilting, but in such a way that it almost resembles a ribbon. And when we get up here, We'll end it with another V. And there you have your ribbon meander. If you want to further enhance this, you can do loops or circles, little circles in here. You can do straight line quilting. Um, just basically what we did um, on the ribbon in the last series. You can just fill it in like this. However you want to make it, it's your quilt. Now let's have some real fun. We'll put some stitches together. Um, let's start out with Oh, a circle. Now let's do a half scallop. And let's add one on the other side. Let's do a meandering up through the center and some tiny seed pods. So we've created a flower. I want to cut this red tail out of here before we go any further. Now I'm sure you can come out with a, a, a much fancier flower. This is just popping in right now. Okay, now we're going to make a vine. Okay, we did the fern feather in one of our lessons. Let's do a loopy feather in this one. 
We're going to start out with the ground leaves being loops pointing up and then an arc coming back. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Let's do two loops. Okay, that's our base feather. Now, let's do some more loops. And we'll come back over top of those to form that feather look. a little slight narrow arc and let's do another series of loops and an arc another series of loops Feathers don't always have to be just plumes. They can be whatever you want them to be. Another one in on this side. And a little loop there. Now let's come up here and let's just do some base loops at the base of the flower. And maybe we can make this flower stand out a little bit more by maybe just doing some stitching inside. Maybe we can borrow on some more of those scallops that we did before, just the small ones. And come back with a double row. This is how Graffiti quilting is established. You just start throwing things in just because you feel like it. And you can come up with some pretty wild designs. on do more scallops until we're done. And there's our fancy flower. I'm going to leave you with something else you can do with loops. And we're going to start out by making a series of three loops. I call them Baby Bear, Mama Bear, and Papa Bear. Now, we want the next one to come in between those ones. So I'm going to do the Baby. 
comma, papa. In between these, baby, mama, papa. In between those, baby, Now I want to get over here so I can add some on this side. So I did that just by echoing. And I'll do another echo down here just to fill that in. But if you want to learn how to do more of this, this particular stitch, there's a, a video in the files. I think it's called Turning Drips into Beautiful Puddles. These are all little drips, and when you put them together, they make something really special. So you might want to look at that video also. And on that note, I'll see you next time. Have fun. Make sure you show me what you've been working on. I love seeing your pictures.